This guy spent over $250,000 on fake goods. And today he's making tens of millions of dollars in e-commerce. What did he spend the money on? 130,000 on Tony Robbins, special one-on-one -on -one coach and going with him into the Himalaya, Joe Dispenza in Mexico, flirt coaching, fitness coaching, sleep coaching, habit coaching. What can he tell us about the guru industry that no one else knows and what made him successful? The difficulty here is to find the right information. You know, there are now this big trend in the recent years, like everyone can call himself coaches and they do so. And even people from his close circle have become fake gurus. In his own business, he was not successful at all. But then later he was selling like high ticket courses and coachings to help people develop their own freedom. Ridiculously expensive. You don't trust him anymore. I was always hoping, let this be what I need for being finally happy and successful. So what eventually made him successful? When Dennis and I were starting out, we somehow figured out how to find the right information. We found this amazing podcast, showed us 80% of what we needed to know. Two years later, I exited my business and he kept building his into a gajillion dollar empire. And there are three crucial things you have to know to find the golden information. And the third one just recently allowed me to get mentored by the most successful YouTuber on the planet. Jimmy, is that you? Yes, sir. How's it going? Here's the first one. See, when me and Dennis were starting out as clueless entrepreneurs, I found this guy on YouTube who was the perfect example of a fake guru. Zero to one million in 12 months, showing case studies, leading to a sales page to put in your email with lots of people exposing him in the comments. But instead of just putting him in a box, I stayed open-minded and checked out his podcast. And he taught solid business principles that changed everything for me. He was so transparent. He was genuine. We ended up flying to Austin in 2016 after our businesses started taking off and we went to Capcom. It was full of legit entrepreneurs. The speakers were amazing. And I don't know if I could have grown my business to seven figures and eventually exited without his help. What would you tell these people who put you in the same box? Well, I think they're right to be skeptical. I've made way more money doing stuff than teaching it. The dirt comes up in our industry is when somebody makes the majority of their money selling to other people how to make money. If you want to find the resources that help you crush it, you have to learn this first skill. A lot of people think very black and white. Someone sells a course, scam! Their price ends in a seven. That's mind control. They had a failed business before. Trust them. But reality is never so simple that it's black and white. It's always some shade of gray with white dots and some black sprinkles on top. And this skill is the secret to rapid and deep learning, which is nuanced thinking. Just because someone sells a course with big promises doesn't mean they're a scam and don't give good advice. Just because someone is a successful entrepreneur doesn't mean their advice is good. And just because someone had a failed marriage doesn't mean they give terrible relationship advice. Some of these gurus know how to sell, build a personal brand, grow a cult-like following, which you can learn so much from if you just observe them. Nuanced thinking allows you to learn from anyone. And when I asked you guys for your opinion on coaches and courses, it was really cool to see how many of you are nuanced thinkers. But before I tell you the second point, you're probably like, give me specific people. I don't want to think for myself. Tell me who to listen to it. Don't think of me. So here's a few people. We have Jeff Hoffman built multiple billion dollar companies, Dan Sullivan and Peter Diamandis. Incredible. And I think the number one person who taught me the most about life, Tony Robbins. Going to date with destiny was, I have to say it, it was life changing. It really was. Who do you think is legit? Tim Ferriss, Gary Keller, Leon Hendricks. Arnold. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, yeah. I want to learn directly from the people in the top of their field. And you might be like, but they don't give you the practical step-by-step -step instructions. And it's true. They talk about the fundamental principles that are crucial. No. Psst. Want to know where to find the really practical stuff? Google. All the small step-by-step -step instructions you need are out there. So many newbies think it's about the tactics and the how-to, but that's maybe 2% of it. Learning the solid business principles, that's the important part. But how do you know you're learning from the right people? For that, you need the second skill. I call it information filtering. And I mentioned it in this video as well. How do they find the right information? Hey man, my heart goes out to those people who are asking that question because that was me. So here are six very rough guidelines. Look at what their businesses are that are creating wealth and if they have them. Number one, do they have the result that I want? Somebody who is teaching these up front but actually has real businesses behind the curtain. Alex Hormozzi is another one of these guys. My name is Alex Hormozzi. I'm the owner of Allen Gym Launch, Prestige Labs, and five other portfolio companies, and I have absolutely nothing to sell you. For newer entrepreneurs, look for people who have taught people from where you are to where you want to go. 
Let's say you struggle with laziness or self-doubt. Who do you think you should listen to? Gary Vee, who was on fire the second he plopped out of the womb. I'm gonna make Monday morning my Working non-stop the day he was born. Or Tom Bilyeu, who started out lazy, without discipline, overweight, and then built a billion dollar company. Thirdly, how credible and smart are the people who take the advice? If your weird uncle tells you that drinking your own pee is healthy, take it with a grain of salt. The advice, not the pee. And that's the danger of free advice on Reddit, because it only focuses on how many people are upvoting and agreeing with one opinion without knowing anything about who these people are. For all you know, you could be getting fitness advice from the wrong people. Number four. Do I trust their intentions? And this is probably the hardest one. Do I really trust this person wants me to succeed? Also look at the incentives and biases. The guys exposing the gurus aren't godsend angels just there to save you either. They also have their own agenda, including me. <laughs> Sorry. They're primarily entertainment channels who are incentivized to show the drama because that's what people want to see. Which video are you more likely to click on? I wasted $50,000 on fake gurus or how to make better judgments on how advice to listen to. And number six, cross-reference the information. Try to find many sources. The more you learn, the more patterns you notice. Is this reasonable? What is the evidence that exists to support for this? And do I think within my current context, it is applicable? So when you see all these amazing CEOs hammering the fact that you need to have an awesome product, but some guru tells you, you can sell food, dishes, pots, pans. Yeah, you know, does that make sense? Like, uh, so why invest in any coaching if everything is out there? Here's the problem. Once you've built a business and you want to grow further, you won't find the stuff you need in the first search results on Google or YouTube. At that point, you'd be stupid not to hire an expert or join a mastermind. Without this, I wouldn't have achieved nearly as much as I achieve now. There's a reason why someone like Alex Hormozzi has spent over $700,000 on coaching. I'm a product of e-learning, buying books and seminars and, and, and workshops. But for the newbies, Here's a rule of thumb. If you can't succeed off of free information and at least get it off the ground, then you have a completely different problem. That's very well said, Leon. I couldn't agree more. No course or coach is gonna fix that because you like the third and most important thing, which got me in touch with Mr. Beast. Everything I've told you so far is obsolete if you don't get this one thing down. The first information marketing thing that I ever purchased was a weekend in Vegas, $3,000. You'll make $10,000 the end of the weekend or I'll give you your money back. That was the guarantee. And I went with a friend of mine. We go through the whole weekend and neither of us made $10,000. But I learned how to run Facebook ads. He asked for his money back. I did not. We are in very different positions in our life. And so the question is, was that weekend scam? The way that most people should see things is that everything exists on a normal curve. So you've got your outliers on the front end, you got outliers on the back end. So it doesn't matter how good you are, this person will never succeed, right? And this person will succeed no matter what because of who they are. It is more prudent for the people who want to learn to try and move themselves this way so that no matter what you do, you will get a return on it. Even if it's terrible, I will learn what not to do. So how do we become one of these people who succeed no matter what? When I was starting out on YouTube, I was really struggling. Why were my videos not getting more views? So I thought, it's because of the algorithm. I'm not getting any traffic. So I ran YouTube ad, posted on Reddit, shared it on Facebook, and there were countless of resources that I found that were helpful. But still, things weren't moving forward, and I had to figure it out. Do I lack a belief? Do I lack a trait? Or do I lack a skill? Where is the deficiency in my skill sets that's required to, to be successful? And after months of this, I learned it had nothing to do with the algorithm. It was because I lacked the skills to make good videos. They just didn't deserve any views. So then I focused on building my skills and it paid off. I was only able to improve because I had some level of this third component, which is self-awareness. I might have the world's best course on copywriting, but if copywriting is not the weakness in your business, you could buy the course on copywriting and make no more money. Whose fault is that? Self-awareness is the foundation of any personal growth. Without it, you don't know what you're lacking, therefore what advice you should listen to, so you keep working on the wrong things. <laughs> Because advice could be great for most people, but the exact opposite of what you should do. Somebody could tell you to work harder, but if you're someone who's already an obsessive worker and you're burning out, what you should do is probably take some time off and meditate. The best way I found to develop more self-awareness is journaling. And I'll put a link down below to the journaling exercises that I use that help me with that. And then something happened that changed everything for me. Mr. Beast, send me a message. <laughs> This guy with almost 70 million subscribers calls a guy who at the time had only 15,000 subscribers. Why is that? Hey, Jimmy, is that you? Yes, sir, how's it going? 
For over 30 minutes, Jimmy took the time to help me out without asking for anything in return. Here's a fact. A lot of really successful people want you to succeed. They're desperately looking for someone that actually implements what they say. But it's rare that they find someone who really does. So become one of the few who execute. Also, make sure you check out this video over here. I put a ton of work into all of them. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.